Hi guys, so it's time to learn a little bit about flip-flops. I've discovered this uh, fun little free simulator site called circuitverse.org. It's not very sophisticated. It's not even uh, super accurate, but for what I wanna show you right now, it turns out to be quite nice. So the idea is you can simply uh, drag inputs around. Let's see. Uh, I need a couple of inputs here, and then I'm going to uh, get a flip-flop. There's different kinds of flip-flops. A flip-flop is basically just a, a memory. It keeps track of a single bit. It can either be high or low. So, And there's different kinds of flip-flops that have slightly different behavior. I want to start with something called a T flip-flop, which is what was used in the original design. Uh, in GitHub that we were going to use with the PSOC. So the way a toggle flip-flop works is it's got a clock input. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the clock to this guy. And then it's got a toggle input, which is a bit that tells it whether or not to toggle. So if this bit is zero, then the clock, let's see, let's get an output here so we can see. There's actually a totally uh, unrealistic, but somewhat useful output called an LED. You guys know how LEDs work. This LED is a little magical in the sense that it only has one connection and somehow it still lights. Um, we all know that real LEDs don't work like that. It also uh, doesn't require a resistance to limit current. It simply goes, it lights whenever this output voltage is high. So it's sort of an idealized sort of mis mysterious thing that doesn't really exist. But what it does do is it lights up when this output goes high. So if I toggle the clock line, notice that when the clock line is zero, this is a dark green. When the clock line is high, this is a light green. So the color of these wires actually tells you what the voltage is. But if I make the toggle line high, then every time the clock ticks, it, it toggles the output. So notice that when the clock ticks, it goes high, then low, then high, then low, etc. Right? So that is a, it's simply, uh, switches state every time the clock goes through one transition. So uh, the circuit that we're going to be dealing with has an additional, oh no, that's not what I want. I want another flip-flop. So let's come down here and grab another toggle flip-flop. And what I want to do is to tie this guy here, and then let's keep the same clock. Okay, and then let's add another LED. Okay, and then let's toggle the clock some more. Notice what happens, they're both out, then the first LED lights, then it goes off, but when this one goes off, that makes the second LED light, and then they both light, and they both go to zero. So this is actually a two-bit binary counter, because remember, in binary, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 2, and 1, 1 is 3. So it's counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that is a two-bit binary counter. Um, then the other thing we need is to add another bit because the assignment is to make a three-bit binary counter. So let's grab another LED for that last bit. We'll grab another T flip-flop. Uh, goes here. That's the T flip-flop for the last bit. Now the problem is, in order for this bit to toggle, the way it works is, for the next most significant bit to toggle, all the bits below it have to be one. So this, these two have to both be one in order for this one to toggle. So in order to enforce that kind of logic, I need a gate, it's called an AND gate. So I'm gonna drag an AND gate over here, and we're gonna take this guy. Okay, there we go. And I need this one, boom. And then this has to match. 
Okay, so the idea is when this guy is high and this guy is high, then this guy is high. Let's watch that. They're both low. One's high. Now the other's high. Now they're both high, and this light lights up. Let's extend this clock over to this guy. And let's set the output to this LED. And now this one's going to toggle every time these two are high. So let's see how that works. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then back to 0. So that's a 3-bit binary candle. This is the design we're going to build in the lab, in the lab, in Tinkercad, using real chips. The only difference is uh, in Tinkercad, there are no T flip-flops. There are only JK flip-flops. But we're going to learn how to use a JK flip-flop to get the functionality of a T flip-flop. But we'll do that next time. All right, take care.